supreme absolute truth the personality of godhead is one and he is spread everywhere by his impersonal feature this is clearly expressed in the bhagavad gita lord krishna says everything that is experienced is but an expansion of my energy everything is sustained by him but that does not mean that he is in everything sense perceptions such as oral perception of the sound of a drum visual perception of a beautiful woman or perception of a delicious taste of a milk preparation by the tongue all come through different senses and therefore differently understood therefore sensory knowledge is divided in different categories although actually everything is one as a manifestation of energy of the supreme lord similarly the energies of fire are heat and illumination and by these two energies fire can display itself in many varieties or in diversified sense perception mayavadi philosophers declare that diversity be false but vaishnava philosophers do not accept the different manifestations as false they accept them as non different from the supreme personality of godhead because they are a display of his diverse energies the philosophy that absolute is true and this creation is false brahma satyam jaga mithya is not accepted by vaishnava philosophers the example is given that although all that glitters is not gold this does not mean that a glittering object is false for example an oyster shell appears to be golden this appearance of golden hue is due to the perception of the eyes but that does not mean that the oyster shell is false similarly by seeing the form of lord krishna one cannot understand what he actually is but this does not mean that he is false the form of krishna has to be understood as it is described in the books of knowledge such as brahma samhita Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Krishna the supreme personality of godhead has an eternal blissful spiritual body by our imperfect sense perception we cannot understand the form of the lord we have to acquire knowledge about him therefore it is said here gyanam ekam bhagavad gita confirms that they are fools who simply upon seeing krishna consider him a common man they do not know the unlimited knowledge power and opulence of the supreme personality of godhead material sense perception sorry material sense speculation leads to the conclusion that the supreme is formless it is because of such mental speculation that the conditioned soul remains in ignorance under the spell of illusory energy the supreme person has to be understood by the transcendental sound vibrated by him in the bhagavad gita wherein he says that he has nothing superior to himself the impersonal brahman effulgem is resting on his personality The purified absolute vision of the Bhagavad Gita is compared to the river Ganges. Ganges water is so pure that it can purify even the asses and cows. But anyone who disregarding the pure Ganges wishes to be purified instead by the filthy water flowing in a drain cannot be successful. Similarly one can successfully attain pure knowledge of the absolute only by hearing from the pure absolute himself. In this verse it is clearly said that those who are averse to the supreme personality of godhead speculate with their imperfect senses about the nature of the absolute truth the formless brahman conception however can be received only by oral reception and not by personal experience knowledge is therefore acquired by oral reception it is confirmed in the vedanta sutra shastra yoni tvat one has to acquire pure knowledge from the authorized scriptures so called speculative arguments about the absolute truth are therefore useless the actual identity of the living entity is his consciousness which is always present while the living entity is awake dreaming or in deep sleep even in deep sleep he can perceive by consciousness whether he is happy or distressed thus when consciousness is displayed through the medium of subtle and gross material bodies it is covered but when the consciousness is purified in krishna consciousness one becomes free from the entanglement of repeated birth and death when uncontaminated pure knowledge is uncovered from the modes of material nature the actual identity of the living entity is discovered he is eternally a servitor of the supreme personality of godhead the process of uncovering is like this the rays of sunshine are luminous and the sun itself is also luminous in the presence of the sun the rays illuminate just like the sun but when the sunshine is covered by the spell of a cloud or maya then darkness the imperfection 
or of perception begins. Therefore, to get out of the entanglement of the spell of nascence, one has to awaken his spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness in terms of authorized scriptures. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta Papad. So here in this verse, the understanding of the Supreme Lord, <clears throat> the right process, how we can go about understanding the Supreme Lord is mentioned. <clears throat> so Prabhupada in the purport explains, the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of Godhead is one and he is spread everywhere by his impersonal feature. So whatever we see in this creation, both material and spiritual, this gigantic universe with so many planets, so many stars, huge creation, the essence is that it is all but Krishna and his energies. There is nothing else. Everything we see in the creation is nothing but the Lord and His energies, manifestation of His energies. Now there is a very powerful energy of the Lord which is called Maya Shakti, which is also called Avidya Shakti. It's energy of the Lord. Even Maya is energy of the Lord. Devi Esha Gunamai Mama Maya Dhurateya. Sometimes we get a feeling that Maya is an inimical force like you know, the demons, the, in Christian world they call it Satan. It's a demoniac force and then there is you know, the Lord and his forces and they are so to say battling. But the right understanding is everything including Maya is energy of the Lord, including Avidya. Avidya Shakti which covers the knowledge of the living entity, which covers the pure consciousness of the living entity is also Lord's energy. Sometimes people wonder if Lord is all powerful, He is all kind, He is all loving, then why is Maya so powerful? So it appears that you know Maya is more powerful and even though we are chanting, even though we are trying to practice the principles of Krishna Consciousness, it overpowers us. So example is given that just like the clouds are created by the sun, in that sense sun is the cause of cloud. And when there are a lot of clouds in the sky, it appears that the sun is covered. Sometimes when it's very cloudy, it's about to rain, you can go out in the sky and you can go out and say that today there is no sun because it's all cloudy. Actually, if we see clouds have no power to cover the sun. Although it is created by the sun, it said that sun is 14,000 times bigger than earth. And the clouds may be few kilometers, few miles, maybe 20 miles, 10 miles, 15 miles. Compared to the distance between earth and sun and the size of sun and the size of earth, 15 kilometers, 15 miles is insignificant. Forget about 15 miles, just a small you know, cloud can cover, sometimes you know, when we are in the sun, we want sunlight. Just a small cloud comes and for three minutes or five minutes the sun is so-called hidden. There is no sunlight. So sun can never be covered by clouds. It's 14,000 times bigger than earth. But it appears to us that there is no sun in the sky. So what clouds do is Clouds don't cover the sun, clouds cover our vision. So this Shakti of the Lord, Avidya Shakti, it is coming from the Lord, it has a purpose. We have come in this world to become enjoyers. 
we have come in this world to become the lord to be the center of attraction to enjoy name fame we want to be glorified so then our true constitutional position has to be so to say covered then only i can think that i am the enjoyer to facilitate fulfillment of our desires this avidya shakti is there which acts on the living entity so although it is energy of the lord krishna in the gita says devi esha gunamai mama maya dhuratya it's very very powerful and people are trying different means different ways if you see there are a lot of books in the market how to be happy how to enjoy life you know a lot of people have realized that there is a struggle how to come out of anxiety how to stop worrying start living maya is bashing the living entity and some have realized some are yet to realize devi esha gunamai mama maya dhuratya and then krishna also says that mam eva many times when we are also so to say bashed by maya are many of us when we come to krishna consciousness in fact not many of us krishna in the gita says the four kinds of living entities who will surrender to the lord who will come to the lord chaturvida bhajante mam so one of them is who is in distress who is inquisitive who is in knowledge who is desirer of wealth so initially the living entities may come to the lord but not with the pure desire to be conscious of him to serve him it could be just because a person wants relief from attacks of maya so <clears throat> different people are trying different means to come out of maya or illusory energy but krishna is giving us that unless we surrender to him unless that root disease for which we have come in this material world unless that is unless we are purified of icha dvesha samutthena dvanda mohena bharata the root disease that we have icha icha means desire to enjoy independent of lord and dvesha envy so unless we become devotees of the lord surrender to him this maya shakti will continue to do its designed work it's designed for a particular objective many times we want to come out of maya but without being conscious of lord without being krishna ka through some material jugglery or through material adjustments which will never be possible stop gap quick fix solutions some peace of mind all that is possible but a real solution to the problem real happiness which we are hankering to achieve can only come when we become conscious of the lord be established in a pure consciousness which prabhupad here in the purport mentions is krishna consciousness therefore to get out of the entanglement of the spell of nascence one has to awaken his spiritual consciousness or krishna consciousness in terms of authorized scriptures so last session we discussed last class when i was here we discussed about a philosophy of charvak muni charvak muni was propagating the understanding that ultimately goal of life is to enjoy life by hook or crook enjoy life people also subscribe to this understanding in present times many people are followers of that philosophy live life king size and you know we have many popular brands just do it don't worry and charvak muni was of the opinion that ultimately all of us irrespective of whether we engaged in pious activities impious activities ye khana hai nahi khana hai ultimately everyone has to become bhasma 
we have to you know get cremated and you know it'll all be turned into ashes so before we turn to ashes which is eventual end for both pious and impious people better enjoy life and for that you have to beg borrow steal you know what about you know sinful reactions you will be held accountable for the bad deeds so is that you don't worry what you like doing is pious what is not pleasing for your mind and senses is impious that was the definition by charvak muni so that's purely atheistic philosophy so broadly speaking we have theists and the atheist atheists are subscriber of the understanding that is no soul there is no god there is no afterlife there is no accountability for our actions eat drink be merry enjoy life and then comes the theists these means who have some sense so we have 4 lakh species out of 84 lakh species so a large portion is atheists and then we have again depends on how we classify then we have the theists who have some sense some understanding some surrender to the lord and the final end of that spectrum is pure devotees pure consciousness completely surrender to the supreme lord purely krishna conscious so now we have on one end completely barbaric uncultured with no conception of god and the other end of the spectrum we have pure devotees so all different religions of the world all different scriptures actually if you ask anybody this question i invariably ask in the sessions how many of us feel that today the world is in a mess because of religion i have seen almost everyone so called even devotees who are practicing krishna consciousness or maybe when started chanting i have asked this question many many times everyone raises their hands they say today the world is in a mess because we also see people fighting in the name of religion communal riots happening countries fighting in the name of religion many of the world wars have wars in the world have happened because of israel palestine all these things the root is religion that's how many people subscribe to the understanding that you know do away with religion be a good human being first so why do people come to this conclusion because people come to this conclusion when they see that all religions are having instructions which apparently are contradictory if you go to christianity they'll say jesus is the only way if you come to us we'll say krishna is the only way and some fanatic people would say you know my god is better than your god or my religion is better than your religion and that's how many people in the name of god are trying to save other souls by converting them but the true understanding is just like in our colleges in our schools we have primary school we have secondary school we have senior secondary school we have pre university then we have university graduation and then we have post grad all religions with different instructions with different details with different prescriptions with different do's and don'ts are trying to take living entities who have got covered with avidya shakti to different degrees whose consciousness has been covered to take them from one level of their consciousness to the next level so that way no religion is bad even the so called religion where we see there is a prescription of eating meat again we have to understand in context why they are prescribing but it has a place just like we cannot take a 2 year old or a child who is supposed to be attending second standard and make him sit with a 10th standard student the same book cannot be taught because there are different levels so different religions are giving different instructions according to time place and circumstances to take the living entity who has got covered with this avidya shakti whose consciousness has got polluted to the next higher level of purification
Just like we have maths being taught in primary school and then we have secondary school and then we are higher secondary school. All of them are doing their respective duties. So now, one is those who do not believe in God. Then as part of the process of somehow connecting that living entity who has completely got disconnected with the Lord, even in the Gita, Krishna talks about different yoga systems. Yoga means to connect, to link. How many of us do yoga every day? Some people say, no, I don't do yoga. See how deeply this misunderstanding has crept into the system. When I ask this question, even you know, in the Gita Life session, which happens there, everyone who is attending Gita Life, Gita reading and chanting, you know, two, three people will raise hands and then others say, hey, unko bhi hoa, kuch to hai ko. <laughs> So yoga, typically including us, when generally the word yoga, do yoga. Okay, Prabhuji, I'll find time, 10 minutes. After chanting, I'll do yoga. <laughs> so typical understanding of word yoga is, you know, today what is understood in, you know, so to say, conventional understanding is to do with asanas. But the real word yoga means to connect, to connect that living entity who has forgotten Lord. Now the living entity can forget the connection with the Lord, but that does not mean that connection does not exist. A child can forget his father, but that connection is still there. He is born to a father. He can deny that he is not my father. He can deny that I don't care of you, but then the connection is there. So likewise, Krishna, broadly speaking, although we hear of so many yogas these days, power yoga and fire yoga. <laughs> you see bill, big billboards. You know, different yoga is getting, because the word yoga has become so international yoga day. Broadly speaking, Krishna talks about four yogas. And again, it is meant for living entities who are at different levels of their spiritual growth. In the third chapter, Krishna talks about karma yoga. And then we have jnana yoga. Ashtanga Yoga and finally Krishna talks about Bhakti Yoga. And then he concludes saying that Yoginam Api Sarvesham of all the yogis. Sometimes we get an understanding that I am a Karma Yogi or somebody says I am a Jnana Yogi. It appears that they are treading different paths. Just like I am an engineer, I am a doctor, I am an architect. There are different streams you can if an engineer is getting into that line he may not for a person who is pursuing medicine it's a completely different line so it appears that somebody who's a karma yogi who's a jnana yogi they're treading different paths but actually our scriptures give us an understanding that different yogas are nothing but steps in the yoga ladder and this ladder just like if you have to go higher go to some higher destination, we use ladder. Likewise, when we have to elevate our consciousness, then these different yoga systems are like different rungs of the yoga ladder. Why different yoga systems are recommended? Because not everyone can practice the highest. Even in the 12th chapter, Krishna says, the highest who is completely absorbed in him, without deviation, is intelligence fixed on him. And realizing that not everyone can be at that level, can practice this, Krishna says, if you cannot do this, then you have another prescription. 
knowing that people cannot follow that also if you cannot do this then another prescription like that six levels are there where krishna talks about if you cannot do this do this if you cannot do this do this so what is karma yoga karma yoga krishna says there's a verse very famous verse in the gita all of us know about it karma eva adikar ma phaleshu kadachana you have the right to do your duty but do not be attached to the results of your acti ma karma phala hetur bhur do not think yourself to be the cause of the results of your work and somebody may say if i am not attached to the results of my work if i don't have any sense of accomplishment if i am not the cause if i have no feeling that i have done it then what's the motivation then as part of karma yoga it is prescribed that simultaneously you should not be attached to not doing your duty many times we are attached to doing the duty because we aspire for results so karma yoga is where you do not be attached to the results do as a matter of duty without desire for sense gratification and offering the results of the work to the supreme but frankly speaking if we realize the karma yoga part the clear understanding of who that supreme is is not there many people say i am a karma yogi what they actually mean is that i for me work is worship that is not karma yoga karma yoga involves one can do some work which one likes doing but offer the results of that work to supreme may not be with a clear understanding of who that supreme is so that's a stepping stone towards higher levels of consciousness because when we are attached to the results and when we desire to enjoy the results which is the root ichha dvesha ichha means desire to enjoy lust krishna says iha vairinam it's the greatest enemy of the living it entangles so karma yoga is art of doing our work in such a way that we do not get entangled more and more in this material world sometimes we get this understanding that morning till 9 o'clock we do bhakti yoga and after 9:30 when we go out for different services we do karma yoga and then when we come back in the evening shayan aarti onwards we do again bhakti yoga for some time i had that understanding it was not very clear because even karma yoga krishna talks offering the results of work to me to the supreme yagnat karmano anyatra loko yam karma bandhana so gyana yoga is a place where a person starts inquiring who is that supreme and that inquiry can be backed by speculation not necessarily through scriptural understanding understanding from authorized scriptures when can start using speculation to understand who that supreme is and often we come across you know prabhupada mentions about mayavadis impersonalist using logic using inference one can conclude that the supreme is impersonal he has no form he is not a person he is some powerful force some energy just like we have an understanding that a person is limited by time and space if you are here today it's very clear for me that okay you are not in the ashram because you cannot simultaneously be there in two places knowing that lord is omnipresent he is present everywhere using logic one can conclude that that the supreme absolute truth is impersonal 
because person means limited by time and space and also we see person in our experience undergoing old age disease death but the lord who is supreme who is beyond all this imperfections janma mrityu jara vyadhi so he has to be impersonal so of the impersonal school we have the shankaracharya who eventually after having spoken about impersonal philosophy also finally he concluded bhaj govindam bhaj govindam bhaj govindam mudamate and in fact some of the shankaracharya philosophers they they also use speculation to derive meaning out what shankaracharya meant with this bhaj govindam bhaj govindam he said shankaracharya is actually saying bhaj govindam bhaj govindam bhaj govindam those who are mudamate those who are mudamate they will say bhaj govindam bhaj govindam but ultimately the lord is impersonal so you have karma yoga and then we have gyana yoga so prabhupad here it says that in the purport unless we get this knowledge from a pure authorized source descending process from authorized scriptures we will for sure make a mistake in understanding of the supreme we cannot trust our senses we cannot trust our mind we cannot trust our intelligence in the battle of kurukshetra the lord was seen by so many people but not everyone could come to the conclusion that here is the supreme personality of god it only by hearing from authorized source we can come to the right conclusion just by even even mugging up even sometimes you know we mug up and say did i share that shikari aayega that in the last so one time there was uh, you know group of birds they were quite tormented with you know hunters coming into the into the jungles and then you know making them taking them captive and taking them off in hindi they are called shikaris hunters so so the birds were quite disturbed with that so one of the lead bird went to a sage the leader of the birds went to the sage he says you know every time when we are you know hopping around here and there trying to fetch our food we get caught in the net what should we do so the sage said i'll give you a mantra just memorize this mantra and you will be safe so they were ready to memorize the mantra so the sh- the sage gave them a mantra always keep chanting shikari aayega dana dalega jal bichayega lob se usme phasna nahi shikari aayega dana dalega jal bichayega lob se usme phasna nahi so all the birds you know they were all from twig to twig bird to bird shikari aayega dana dalega jal bichayega lob se usme phasna nahi so they were you know always so to say chirping this mantra then actually one day the shikari came they saw the shikari was putting dana and this bird is a shikari aayega dana dalega jal bichayega and then actually they started you know going near the dana and trying to eat and the shikari actually put the jal on top of them and they all still the shikari aayega dana dalega jal bichayega lob se usme pas and actually they got caught and that shikari finally wrapped that you know net caught all of them and they all you know caught in between trying to escape shikari aayega dana dalega jal bichayega lob se usme phasna nahi so many times when we try to lord over the process without following the descending process without begging for the mercy divya gyan hriday prakashito that's why it says pure devotee is even free from the desire for gyana and karma anya bilashita shunya gyana karmane anavritam now understanding bhagavad gita bhagavatam 
in a proper frame of mind in the mood of service is different from lording over jnana understanding bhagavad gita bhagavatam reading making notes trying to understand from different without speculating on who is the supreme absolute truth trying to understand the words of krishna without speculating whether krishna exists not exists can i have faith on his words that's that speculation as without any conclusive understanding who is the supreme using our material logic that's the contamination of jnana and then we have krishna talking about ashtanga yoga ashtanga yoga where in present world many people cannot practice arjuna 5000 years back when he was prescribed go to a secluded place with a deer skin sit erect rigid posture it's practically impossible for 99.99999% of the people's population in the world today go to a secluded place holy place sit erect without moving practice strict celibacy and arjuna 5000 years back i'll just share a small story arjuna he was very of all the so called disciples of dronacharya he was the pet disciple when dronacharya was teaching them archery as part of so to say their training they were supposed to shoot a bird in the eye of the bird with an arrow the bird was made to sit in a tree so when yudhishthira maharaj was called by dronacharya he asked what are you saying there the assignment was they have to shoot the eye of a bird so yudhishthira maharaj was asked, what are you seeing do you see the sky he says yes i am able to see do you see the tree with all the branches with all the leaves yes yes i am able to see do you see the bird yes i am able to see do you see the eye of a bird yes i am able to see so dronacharya said okay you you be a side next he called uh, duryodhan do you see this tree yes yes do you see the color of the bird yes he also disqualified just like in army you know moment you know there are some very base the height is not this much okay disqualify so dronacharya didn't even give them an opportunity to shoot chalo side mein ho ja thoda and then come arjuna arjuna was so focused so he asked do you see the tree he says no do you see the bird he says no he says do you see the eye of the bird he says no so what are you seeing then he says eyeball of that bird and then when he shot so that's why he said that he was the most accomplished archer now arjuna was so focused his mind so controlled when he was told about astanga yoga he says krishna it's not possible for me and he says chanchala hi mana krishna forget about people like us so ashtanga yoga is ruled out and then finally krishna talks about bhakti yoga bhakti yoga begins with the understanding that krishna with the understanding ek there is one small this thing where daughter of sham sundar was asked who is krishna who is the who is god he says krishna so that understanding that krishna is the supreme personality of god that we are his amsha we are his part and parcel we may not have full realization but our scriptures say so krishna says so here it is said authorized scriptures by the words of gita by words of krishna in the bhagavad gita we may not have full realization but we are willing to accept that we are willing to serve krishna we still may have impurities we still may have jnana karma and all that avidya shakti acting on it 
but we are willing to accept krishna you are supreme i am your amsha i am your servant and with that understanding when we start engaging in utilizing our mind body system our senses in the service of the lord purification happens arjuna in the beginning of gita is reluctant to fight but finally when he sees that krishna is wanting him to fight for his pleasure for his satisfaction not for his personal satisfaction not for his sense gratification he agreed to fight the battle so this whole process of bhakti yoga is we are trying to get the knowledge from authorized sources understand who we are understand who krishna is with the understanding that we are his part and parcel we engage in devotional service which is bhakti yoga when we engage in bhakti yoga there's a bhagavatam there's a series of verses nashta prayesho badreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya hridantasthiya badrani vidunoti srutsatam all the dirty things which are there all the badras all that avidya shakti which is covering our consciousness all that vidunoti srutsatam so we are very very blessed very very fortunate we have a bona fide process we have opportunity to daily hear serv bhagavatam pure knowledge we are very fortunate to have prabhupad this knowledge coming in a pure disciplic succession sometimes we may even get you know i've been chanting for so many years still i am lusty still i have anger still i have all these things it's just a question of time we have to take the medicine sincerely we should not doubt the medicine we should not doubt the process we should not become faithless we should not become hopeless even if we feel that something is lacking we should doubt my sincerity in following the process i am not sincere i am not following strictly and which is also quite obvious everyone knows we have to chant out but we are not able to chant attentively we are trying our best we keep doing that and very soon we will get purified so we'll stop here granth raj shrimad bhagavatam ki shila prabhupad ki